Good morning, my church family. It's wonderful to be here to be able to uh, share a little bit about um, our ministry at Peace of Bread. Um, I do see a few folks that are visiting, so I just would share that uh, Peace of Bread Community Kitchen is a ministry of our church here in Whitensville. It is faithfully uh, sponsored by the NAC, the Northbridge Association of Churches, and we all work together every Wednesday night, uh, serving a free nutritious dinner to anyone in need in our community. We also have a small food pantry, a free clothing room, and we do the best that we can to share God's love with anyone that comes in our doors. Usually, it's about 100 and anywhere from 100 to 150 people on a Wednesday night. This week it was 130. And it's a really cool thing to be a part of. It's, as you know, those of you that volunteer here, it's a busy night. There's a lot going on. This year in particular, we've been blessed with a lot of new and exciting things happening. Uh, we have a new, fairly new actually, a Bible study that starts at 4.30 that's really made a difference in the lives of the people that attend it. Uh, the piece of music worship service on Wednesday, it just blows my mind how that has ministered to the souls that, that come. And uh, we're just so grateful for the support of this church and all the other churches and the people in our community that we work side by side with every Wednesday. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of work. Um, it has definitely defined and given my life purpose over the last 13 years. And uh, it has its ups and downs. More ups than downs because I firmly believe in my heart that it's what our our God wants us to be doing right now in Whitensville as a church. Um, it can be challenging. There are people that don't really like us. And I'll share a story of a, a man in the neighborhood. There's a lot of people that don't park where they're supposed to on Wednesday night. There's no parking signs out there. And some of our elderly folks, some of the people that get here late, park where they're not supposed to. And there's a gentleman in the neighborhood who over the years um, has been frustrated by the parking or lack of parking in the area on Wednesday nights. And as he comes down Spring Street and tries to get home, he has a big truck. He can't get by because people are parked on both sides of the street. And let me tell you, I've preached about it many, 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 many nights at Piece of Bread to people to please don't park on both sides of the street. Park across the street where Unibank lets us park. Park on Cottage Street and people don't listen. Probably one of the only times I've ever been afraid in this church was the first time this gentleman came downstairs on a Wednesday night and screamed in my face very loudly. He's a big guy and said, I don't know what you guys do here. I don't know what you're all about. I don't know what's going on. But I can't get home from work on Wednesday nights because of the way people park here. And I apologize and I tried to say, we, you know, we tell people not to park on Spring Street. They don't listen. We're really sorry. He goes, I'm calling the police. People are going to be towed. I'm like, okay, we've got to do what you have to do. It's not intentional. We're sorry. And then I ask people to please stop parking where they're not supposed to park. So over the years, this gentleman has screamed in my face probably three or four times. About once a year, maybe, he comes down and is frustrated and says, what are you doing? You know, why are you parking? I don't care. And he's really mad. And because I'm there greeting people, he sees me and is like, who's in charge? And like, well, I guess that might be me. Um, <laughs> and I listen to him and I apologize and I try to make it right. Well, one day this past August, it was a really hot, hot night. Um, <laughs> I was really feeling sick. It was so hot downstairs. I tried to leave piece of bread a little early because I just wasn't feeling well. And as I was heading down the ramp, there were about four lovely little old ladies from St. Peter's group who had served that night, walking a little bit ahead of me down the sidewalk. And I saw that guy walking down the street towards the little old ladies. And I said, oh, Lord. And he said, excuse me, ladies. He said, I'm wondering if you could tell me what's going on here. He goes, what is this all about on Wednesdays? Why is there so many people here? Are you giving away free stuff? You know, what is it? And the little lady, old ladies 
kind of didn't know what to say at first, and they happened to turn around and saw me, so I started walking towards them. I said, oh boy, Lord, <laughs> it's that guy. And uh, so I walked up to them, and they, and they said, and one of them was my mother-in-law, and she said, oh, talk to her. <laughs> and I said, hi. And they walked away. I said, can I help you? He said, well, I don't know if you know me. And I said, oh yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> and he said, but you know, I live in the neighborhood and I, I come by on Wednesdays and there's always so much traffic and it makes me mad. And he said, and I've never really, you know, liked you guys. I said, okay. And I said, well, we're just feeding people. We're providing dinners to the community. Is it free? I said, well, yes, it is. I said, all the churches serve in the community and people give to it. And he said, well, you know, I was on Facebook and I saw this story about how a pastor of a church dressed like a homeless man, got all dirty and scrubby, and kind of sat outside his church and was looking for help. And all his parishioners walked by on their way to church and didn't stop to offer him help. And I thought, am I doing that? Is that me? And I said, well, I said, let me explain what we do here on Wednesdays. I said, it is everything here we do is free. It's freely given. Most of the people here that serve do it out of love for God. I said, we're here to help people. He said, well, you know, on Wednesdays when I'm driving home, there's a lot of nice cars parked on that street. I said, well, some of our volunteers might have nice cars. He goes, well, how do you know the people that come there really need the help? I said, well, we're, our mission, I shared our mission statement. We are united in Christ to feed God's people, body and soul. I said, we don't have any paperwork that you have to fill out. If you feel lonely, if you feel hungry, you're welcome here. I said, let me tell you a story about a nice car. I said, one of our elderly couples, when we first started Piece of Bread, was coming to Piece of Bread, and someone came up to me and said, you know, so-and-so, he doesn't really need to be here for a free dinner because I see the car him and his wife drive. I said, well, let me tell you about that car. They didn't have a car for a long time. They used to walk here. But they have a brother who is fairly well off that lives down south. And he was getting a new car, and he gave them his car. So that's why they even have a car. And so the man I was sit talking with, he said, oh, well, I didn't think about that. He said, well, how do you know there's not rich people sitting there on Wednesday night having free dinner? I said, OK. I said, I welcome rich people, too. We don't care if anyone has any money. But let me share a story about the little old lady who came to me. She was about 98 at the time. And she said, you know, I'm not sure if I really belong here. I do get a really good Social Security check. It's about $300 a month. I said, everybody's welcome here. You belong here just as much as I do or anybody else. And so as I was talking with this gentleman, I was really grateful that I got a chance to share with him a few of the stories that we've had over the years of God providing, of God blessing our ministry, of reaching out to people that you might think don't need your help, but really need your help. And he kind of was seeing, I, I felt like he was hearing what I had to say. And he said, I, I don't know why I've always just walked by your church and, and not you know, thought so badly of it and not really appreciated what you're doing here. And I said, I, can you tell me your name? Because at this point, I still didn't know his name. And he told me, I said, you know, Aaron, I think God is speaking to you. And social media is a great way, you know. I said, if you felt touched by something you saw on social media and it made you finally come to us and say, what are you guys all about and find out about us, maybe God is really speaking to your heart. Maybe he's trying to get to know you. Do you belong to a church? He said, well, you know, we go to the Catholic church, but we don't really go so much. I welcomed him. I said, why don't you come to church here? We have a service on Wednesday, on Sunday, or come for dinner, or come volunteer, see what we're all about at Piece of Bread. And I think you'll understand what we're doing here. And he said, you know, I'm really happy you talked to me. And I have a lot to think about. And I said, I think you do. I think if you listen, you really hear God is speaking to you about that. So I was so excited after that conversation with that guy. I ran back in here. And the choir guys were all around, milling around here. And I said, I got to just tell you this. 
I said, God gave me this opportunity to speak to this man who was walking around with a hard heart about our ministry here at Peace of Bread and at our church. And thankfully, I had a few words. I don't know really if it impacted him much, but I got to share about what we do here um, at our church. And I really felt God put me in the right place at the right time to speak to this gentleman. And I hope he is still asking you know, what, what it's all about. I hope maybe he's searched deeper and maybe found a faith if he didn't have one. And I hope he doesn't come scream at us again. <laughs> I don't think he will. But um, it was a wonderful thing for me to experience God using me that way. And I guess I have to say it happens a lot to a lot of the volunteers at Peace of Bread when we're in the midst of things doing God's work. I'm sure we all feel that <coughs> at times. Sometimes we just look at one another at Peace of Bread and say, that was God right there. When a lady will come to you and say, you know, is there any such and such of an item in the food pantry? I'm desperate. I don't have the money. I can't buy it. You're like, no, nope, we don't have any of that. And five minutes later, later, a person walks in with a bag full of that, whatever she was looking for. And you've never had it before, but this week you have it. Or the lady that came in one time, and she was very much inebriated. You could smell the liquor on her. And she said, I hope you'll help me. I need help desperately. I've been sober for many years, and I have recently fallen off the wagon. And I turned around and looked for help. And a volunteer was walking by who was an AA sponsor. And she said, I can help. Can I talk with this lady? And we see God blessing our ministry on a regular basis at Peace of Bread in small and mighty ways. And I think it's so important that we talk about these things, whatever ministry we're involved in in church, that we talk about it and share it. So we lift one another up, we remind one another that yes, indeed, God is with us. If we're seeking his will, if we're following what he wants us to do, he is with us. And sometimes you really have to open your eyes wide and just be grateful that you can see it. And in the midst of it, when you see Satan come stomping around, because he sure does when you're doing God's work, we need to remind ourselves why we're doing this and who we're serving and who's really in charge. And then those kind of things really pale in comparison of any importance. So I thank you for your time this morning. I hope that you will continue to pray for the ministry of Peace of Bread. It does need prayer on a regular basis for all the work that is done there on a Wednesday night. And if you haven't had a chance to volunteer and you'd like to, <clears throat> you're more than welcome to join our group that serves so faithfully. And uh, I think together we're doing a mighty and great work in this town, in this place, for his kingdom.